Star Wars Chick here for the RPF.com. I'm at Comic Con 2011 and I am here at the Weta booth. I'm here with Tim Londra from Weta. Thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. I appreciate it. So Tim, tell us a little bit about the Weta workshop and what a typical day is like at Weta. We don't really have a typical day at Weta. It's, um, uh, Weta is a creative organization, so we work on movies. Uh, conceptual design, uh, physical uh, props, uh, digital uh, effects. So for movies like Lord of the Rings, Avatar, District 9, uh, Tintin, which is coming up, uh, Rise of the Apes. Um, so a whole bunch of movies. And so every day you go in thinking you're going to be doing something <laughs> and uh, sooner or later it all changes and <laughs> you're doing something else. I can appreciate that. <laughs> Because we're about 98% creative people, uh, creative people change their minds a lot. <laughs> and so uh, any given day, anything can happen. Sure, absolutely. Tell us a little bit about your role at Weta. I have a very, very important role because uh, there are a lot of very high shelves at the Weta workshop. And <laughs> I'm the only one that can reach them. So my job is really picking things off the high shelves. You have job security. I have job security, <laughs> absolutely. And some of the items are very dangerous. We've got swords, we've got guns, we've got weapons. So if you don't, you know, get them off the shelves correctly, they can they can do damage. Tell us about some of the, the different props and things that you guys have created for some of the films that you mentioned. Yeah, it's... Um, it's impressive. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. It's uh, Obviously, we're best, uh, most well-known for The Lord of the Rings. Um, and I think there was something like 50,000 props created over seven and a half oh, years. Wow. Um, that's immense. For that trilogy. Uh, and that's everything from, you know, hobbit feet to swords, armor, costumes, uh, prosthetics, uh, miniatures, uh, the whole the whole works. Um, but we love doing it, it's, it's, it's who we are and it's, uh, it's our passion. Um, the District 9 movie which came out recently, uh, you know, you've got a real good hardcore fan base of people who love those weapons, yeah, for we, example. Yeah, we, we definitely enjoyed those. They, um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, when, when we do, when the team do design these uh, props, um, it's not just about trying to create something cool, um, it's about making sure that those props uh, naturally exist and fit uh, in that world. So the team always try and uh, create a, a world or universe that makes sense uh, for each movie. So whether it's Pandora or Middle Earth or, or Narnia uh, or District 9, uh, everything has to make sense uh, in that world. Definitely. The guns from District 9 were just incredible. I know we have one of those particular guns and, and the fact that you produce them for the film and then replicated them to make available for the prop market was just an incredible opportunity that we just couldn't pass up. What is it that, that motivated you guys to actually go from making the movie prop to making them available for the consumers? Well, our, our boss and our, one of the founders of Weta, his name is Richard Taylor, and um, he grew up um, with garage kits, making garage kits, and he did that all through his childhood. Um, if you go into his office now, it's, it's full of collectibles, and so it really starts with him. Um, so there's a genuine um, passion within him uh, that he wants to collect these yeah. pieces. And uh, within the workshop, we're all fans as well, so when we work on a movie, um, if, if you make a weapon or if you make a, a prop and it's, it's in the movie, then naturally <laughs> you want to make the, uh, the replica or the toy so you can have it at home. Um, so uh, it comes from within, uh, and then we deal with you know uh, people in uh, forums just like the RPF.com where um, we see that people would like to share in that, and um, so we think great if we can <laughs> if we can if we can do that and, and uh, people can share in that passion, um, uh, it's fun. It, it really is. It, it definitely is a lot of fun. Tell us about some of the artists so people at home can can get to learn a little bit more about them. Well, they're complete nutters, basically. Um, <laughs> they are obsessed with what they do. Uh, they're perfectionists. Um, people will often say, you know, why did you go to that much amount of detail when you probably won't see it in the movie? Um, we're doing that just as much for ourselves as we are for the director or, or for the fans because if it's not right, the fan uh, or, or the guys in the workshop will say, "Well, that's not right. I'm not going to let that, right. you know, go to set. It, it, it has to be right." 
um, just as much to satisfy ourselves so that when they go home at the end of the day and when they see the movie, they, they feel that it was totally authentic. Um, and that comes from our, from our leaders in the, in the organization. Uh, you know, people like Richard Taylor and Peter Jackson, uh, they are, you know, they're brilliant, they're perfectionists and, and everybody, uh, you know, follows that same tune. It's, um, we have to be satisfied within ourselves um, first and foremost. Absolutely. Now, I know that you have a book that you are debuting here at Comic-Con. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. This is um, the Where to Collector's Guide, um, which just launched two days ago. Um, the Collector's Guide is uh, got 10 years of work in here. Um, we started our uh, collectibles 10 years ago, and it has all of the pieces um, from the last 10 years. It's 300 nice. and something pages. Um, of high-end quality uh, photographs, uh, everything from Lord of the Rings, District 9, uh, Dr. Gordbort's infallible ether oscillators, um, Narnia, um, Halo, and, uh, and the works. So it's, it, for us, it, it's, uh, it's 10 years of, of work, and, and uh, it took us a long time to, to pull this together. So we're, we're really happy that it's out. It's a beautiful book. I've gotten to take a look at it, and you definitely should pick it up. It, it, just incredible, definitely worth it. Now, I just saw recently online that you guys did a full-size warthog for Halo, which I'm a big Halo fan, I love the game, so I saw that and it, it actually works, is that correct? Absolutely, It's um, it was created, what, four years ago now for the Halo movie shorts that uh, Neil Blomkamp was working on. So we'd have created a number of weapons, costumes, and the warthog. Uh, so the brief was it had to be fully functioning, uh, it had to be able to withstand a drop off a 20 foot bank, uh, it had to be able to drive through a wall, uh, airbag suspension. Uh, the really coolest thing about it is that at a flick of a switch you can be driving either forwards or backwards and at a flick of a switch uh, you can go into diagonal mode. So you can go left or right diagonally. That's awesome. <laughs> um, the Warthog is actually coming to America the first for the first time. It's really? going to Halo Fest uh, up in Seattle in August, the end of August. Oh, wow. Uh, so our friends at uh, Microsoft are uh, having a big party up there. So if you're in that area, go and have a look at it. Oh, I would love to. I wish I would be up there. That sounds incredible. I think I'll just have to make a trip to New Zealand just for that. <laughs> you're more than welcome. <laughs> so I know Weta initiated the Dr. Gordworks uh, custom ray gun contest for the RPF. Can you tell us a little bit about that contest and, and what what prompted you to go ahead and do that for the RPF? Um, yeah, the, we um, uh, over the last couple of years I've developed a friendship with a chap called Art Andrews, who you may well know. Just a little bit. Um, so Art is um, uh, we've been bouncing around ideas for a competition. Um, one of the things I noticed in a lot of the threads on on the forum was. People obviously want to make um, uh, items from you know their favourite movies, and right. sometimes there's uh, you know difficulty when there's um, IP involved yeah. that's owned by <laughs> you know large companies. So we wanted to give them a chance to do something that you know uh, there wouldn't be a problem. And, and Dr. Gordbort's is a, a brand that we own, and so uh, we're trying to be flexible, if you like. So we wanted to provide them with a canvas, if you like. Um, that they could go to work on. So we thought, why not um, have a batch of unpainted guns that they can uh, remodel, so if they're modelers, uh, they can sculpt if they would like to. Um, they can paint if they would like to. Um, and really just let them go to town. It's, um, for us, it's all about creativity. So there's pretty much no rules or no guidelines. It's um, just go for it. I think it's been a lot of fun. I think it's been a unique opportunity that you given our members and we really really appreciate it. I know that um, there's been a little rumor that we might be having another contest. Can you give us any uh, little tidbits on what that might be about? Well we'd love to. It's um, And again it really depends on, on the people on the forum. If, if, if they enjoyed the unpainted um, uh, bison competition please tell us on the forum and Definitely. we'd be happy to do more. So we've been throwing around a few ideas and um, we thought maybe something in the costuming sort of genre this time. Um, and Weta is well known for making chainmail. We made uh -huh. chainmail for the Lord of the Rings, Kingdom of Heaven, uh, recently Robin Hood. And so uh, why not create some sort of um, chainmail costuming um, competition? That would be pretty cool. I actually got to play with the chainmail a little bit out at the Weta party the other evening and that was a lot of fun. So. 
That could be really interesting. So we welcome the feedback. If, if people like it, great. If they don't, then you know that's fine as well. We um, we only want to do what you know people are going to get into. Uh, some of the work that's been done on the uh, the unpainted bison, the unpainted bison competition has been astounding, to be honest. And, ridiculous um, talent. <laughs> it is, it's absolutely ridiculous talent. And so you know people should know that the. Um, uh, you know the top entries. You know they'll be reviewed by people like um, Greg Broadmore and Richard Taylor. That's pretty cool. <laughs> that's, that's a really unique opportunity, and I, I we really thank you so much for for all that you've done. We really appreciate it. Go forth and create. <laughs> well, Tim, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I Our know pleasure. you've been very busy. <laughs> oh, it's fun. It's uh, we do this for for the fun of it and the passion of it. So um, yeah, we're just kids at heart. Well, this has been Star Wars Chick for the RPF.com.